In this video, we learn how to find the lower quartile, the upper quartile, and the interquartile range from a list of discrete data. And as we'll be seeing, in doing so, we'll also be finding the median. Now, I've written two examples here, and the reason for that is because things look a little different depending upon whether we have an even number of values or an odd number of values. So we'll be looking at both here. That being said, let's get started. In this first example, we're given some grades out of 20. We have 13, 17, 9, 10, and so on and so forth. And we need to find the lower and upper quartile and the interquartile range for this list of grades. And here's how to do that. I'll quickly write SOL for solution. When looking for the quartiles, the first thing we need to do is to rewrite our list of numbers in increasing order, meaning from smallest to biggest. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and press pause and check for yourself. But if I rewrite all of these numbers in increasing order, it becomes 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 19. The next thing we should always do is make a note of how many values we have. And so in this case, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 values. And the number of values we have is called n. So I'll already make a note of the fact that n is equal to 10 in this case. Okay, the trick behind finding the lower quartile and the upper quartile is to split our data into two equal portions. The first being the lower portion of the data, and the second would be the upper portion of our data. And although with a short list like this one, we could probably do it just by i, a more rigorous way of working is to find this data's median. More specifically, the median's position. And there's a formula for the median's position, which you may well already know, but I'll quickly say median's position, median's position, is given by the formula n plus 1 over 2, where the n inside this formula is the number of values we have. So in this case, it's 10. So for this list of data, since n is equal to 10, its median's position will be 10 plus 1 over 2, which quickly turns into 11 divided by 2, which is equal to 5.5. And the fact that the median's position is 5.5 means that the median lies between the fifth and the sixth value inside our list of data. So going from left to right, the fifth value would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the 11 we have here, and therefore the sixth value would be 13. And so I'll quickly draw a line right there in the middle. This is the median's position. And I can write median here. There we go. And we could even quickly calculate the median. It would be the average of 11 and 13, the two middle values. So let's see, that would be 11 plus 13 over 2. That's equal to 24 over 2. And so the median will equal to 12. More importantly for this video, though, this median value splits our data into two lists of data, this lower portion here and the upper portion right here. Now, the lower portion of data we have is what we'll use to find the lower quartile. And put simply, the lower quartile will be the median value of this list of data. And as we'll see in just a minute, the upper quartile will be the median value of this upper portion of data. And so let me quickly write lower quartile. There we go, lower quartile, which we write capital Q with a subscript 1, so Q1. Okay, so if I focus on this list of data, 6, 7, 9, 10, 11, to find its median value, we could technically use this formula again, n plus 1 over 2, but in this case, n would be equal to 5, since there are 5 values. And in fact, maybe I'll scribble that here just for this list. If n equals to 5, then the median will have position n plus 1 over 2, which equals to 5 plus 1 over 2, so that's 6 over 2, which equals to 3. So we could use this method to see that the median value for this list of data is the third value, so 1, 2, 3. And so the median of this lower portion of the data is the lower quartile for the whole list of data. And so I can now state that Q1, the lower quartile, is equal to 9. There we go. Working in a similar way for this upper portion of the data, I can now find the upper quartile. So I'll just write upper quartile. There we go. Sorry there, my U's are looking a bit too much like O's. That does say quartile. Now, the upper quartile is written capital Q with a subscript 3, like so. And so to find it, I need to find the median of this list of numbers, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 19. Again, there are five values here, and so I could use this formula, n plus 1 over 2, which would equal to 3. And so the upper quartile will be 
the median of this list of values, which is the third value in the list. So that's the 15 we have here. And so I can write that the upper quartile is equal to 15. There it is. Okay, finally, we need to find the interquartile range for this data, which we call I, Q, R for interquartile range, and it's equal to Q3 minus Q1, where Q3 will be the upper quartile, 15, and Q1 is the lower quartile, 9. So that's equal to 15 minus 9, which is equal to 6. There we go, that's the interquartile range for that list of data. And we're done. We found the median value, as well as the lower quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range for this list of data. And for this first example, remember, we had an even number of values. Indeed, n was equal to 10. So let's quickly work through example 2 to see what it looks like when there's an odd number of values. And so I'll quickly write S-O-L here. There we go. Now the setup or scenario is the same. We have a list of grades out of 20, which are the grades we see here. And so to find the quartiles, just as we did for this first example, the first thing we need to do is rewrite the list we have here in increasing order. Again, you can press pause to check, but in doing so, I find that we have 6, 7, 9, 10, 13, 14, 15, 17, and 19. There we go. Now I make a note of how many values I have here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So there are nine values. So in this case, n is equal to 9. And to find the quartiles, the first thing I need to do is find the median's position. Remember, that will allow me to split my data into two portions. So let's see, I'll do that on the right-hand side here, and I'll say med position for median's position. And remember, that's equal to n plus 1 over 2. Now, in this case, n is equal to 9, so that will turn into 9 plus 1 over 2. That's equal to 10 over 2, and so that's equal to 5. Now, this 5 tells us that the median is the fifth value in this list. And so going from left to right, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this 13 is the median value. And I'll just write median here. There we go. Now, what's slightly different in this example is that this list of numbers has a middle value, 13. In the first example, on the other hand, the median lied between the fifth and the sixth value. And it doesn't change that many things, but the key thing to keep in mind here is that this median value, or this middle value, won't be included in the lower portion of our data, which I've just underlined in blue, nor will it be included in the upper portion of our data. So this 13 stays right here in the middle, and the lower portion of the data is everything to the left of it, and the upper portion of the data is everything to the right of it. And now that that's established, we can go ahead and find the lower and upper quartile. So the lower quartile, remember that's Q1, will be the middle value of this list of numbers. So if I quickly copy those at 6, 7, 9, and 10, and the middle value for this list of numbers, since there are four, will be the average of the two middle values, 7 and 9. And so I could quickly underline those two middle values and say that Q1 will equal to their average, which would be 7 plus 9 over 2, which would be 16 over 2, which quickly leads us to Q1, the lower quartile, equals to 8. For the upper quartile, we work the same way, and I'll say upper quartile here. There we go. That's Q3. The list of numbers we're working with is this upper portion here. So if I quickly copy those, that's 14, 15, 17, and 19. And looking for this list's median, or middle value, we quickly find that it lies between 15 and 17. In other words, the upper quartile here will be the average of 15 and 17. And so I can quickly write Q3 equals to 15 plus 17 over 2, which equals to 32 over 2, which equals to 16. That's the upper quartile. Finally, I calculate the interquartile range, so that's I, Q, R, using the fact that it's equal to Q3 minus Q1. So in this case, that will be 16 minus 8. So I quickly write that, that's 16 minus 8. And 16 minus 8 is equal to 8. And we're done. We've now found the lower and upper quartiles as well as the interquartile range for this second list of values. And there we go. We now know how to find the lower quartile, upper quartile, and interquartile range from a list of discrete data. And we've seen how to do so when the list has an even number of values as well as when the list has an odd number of values. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.